Welcome to episode seven of the Unbreakable series. I already had a really good idea that we were going to go into lockdown before it actually happened. It was on the cards, it's already been happening in other places in Europe, it was pretty obvious that that was where we're going to be. So I actually managed to take steps beforehand to make sure that the transition from being free and able to move about and do what I wanted to do to being confined to my house was as easy as it possibly could be. Now, people ask me what did I think about when I heard the news, um, to me it wasn't so much news, it was just uh, an announcement and because we knew it was gonna happen. Um, the thoughts that went through my head were the same as whenever anything bad happens or whenever any of my companies have a bit of difficulty. Um, the first thing I thought about was the people that work with me. You can imagine I've got maybe 12, 15 people that work for me. Uh, I've got mothers, providing for their kids. I've got young people starting off in their career and obviously if the companies collapse or fall, then those mothers are gonna struggle to provide for their kids. Those young people that are starting off in their careers are gonna possibly feel disillusioned. So the main thing for me was to put up a strong front. You know, inside, obviously I was very nervous. Things were going bad already before lockdown because people were leaving the country and whatever else. So there are less people around, so there's less business, particularly in some beds as you can imagine. So the main thing for me was being a strong person, be a mentally strong. I can't do much about the physically strong bit, but for me it was making sure that everybody else had the blow softened as much as possible. You know, I had people crying on the phone to me, crying in person. As that was probably the most challenging part of it, was actually feeling their pain as much as I tried to relieve them of the pain and relieve them of the worries and let them know everything's going to be all right and I was there for them. Uh, it's the empathetic side of me which hurt the most. So yeah, that's what I felt when lockdown was announced. Tube station is empty, that's why I'm taking the mask off, but I think I remember going through lockdown just the start of it and thinking how much of a blessing that time could be for some people. Obviously it's a terrible time it's a horrible time for so many people and there were so many problems that were out there in the world at that specific time, but there were so many opportunities for specifically younger people or people that were having dreams and aspirations of starting their own business or changing their career, maybe picking up something that they've never thought, never thought they'd actually be able to do, like learning another language or, I don't know, learning the guitar or a keyboard or something like that. And so few people took advantage of it. So few people. You know, I would have, I would have killed for the opportunity back in the day to actually have that time to be able to focus on starting a business or focus on a, a new channel for my life, it, or focus on, on 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 speaking a new language. There's no way, there's no doubt in my mind, I would have learned how to speak another language in that time. It, no way. And I would have done it. I would have focused, set my goal. Said, look, we're gonna be locked down for a month, two months, three months, whatever it is. I'm gonna do this by this day. You know, I think that's, that would help a lot of people with their mental health as well. If they've got a goal in mind, they've got something that they're trying to achieve. Yeah, so lockdown for Radiance was completely different. Lockdown for Radiance literally meant everything was stopping. And I've got the responsibility of six or seven ladies working for me in the two branches. And I felt a huge amount of guilt, I think, at first, until I properly analyzed it, but guilt and pressure to keep them earning, to find ways to keep them bringing money in for their families. I mean, it's an, it was an impossible task and a hiding to nothing, but I remember three, four weeks before lockdown actually took place, I said to the girls, look, lockdown is gonna come. Something, we're gonna shut down the country. You need to save some money. Don't spend all your wages, put money away, do whatever you can to make as much money as you can now in preparation for what could be, I mean, at the time, I think we just thought it was gonna be a month or two. Uh, it turned out to be four months. Was, I mean, there was absolutely nothing we could do, apart from prepare for the reopening and make sure that we had everything in place, make sure that we were COVID safe and COVID secure. 
um, and hit the ground running when we reopened. And we did, we hit the ground running. We, we gave it everything we got, we had new marketing strategies in place. Uh, we made sure people were well aware that we, we treat their health and safety with the importance that it deserves. And, you know, it's not been easy. We're down a lot on last year. Uh, easily, we're coming up to 200,000 pounds, but, you know, we'll, we'll claw our way back. I know that for certain. We'll get there. Hi, I'm James from Reliance Health. Today we want to talk to you guys about how the lockdown affected us at Reliance Health. What we found was that the projects we had in operating theatres, in hospitals throughout the country, had to come to a standstill. Because the hospital and the NHS started to use operating theatres as an overflow for intensive care units to deal with the number of patients that were incoming into the hospital. Thankfully, after lockdown had finished, we were able to start getting back into the theatres and carry on with the work that we had done. On a side note, we did have extra projects coming in as met to create makeshift intensive care units. So we were very lucky to be able to carry on with work at the time. Right, that's the end of episode seven, the lockdown edition of the Unbreakable series. I guess if we're gonna have any takeaways from this episode, it's if you are planning to utilize and maximize the time that you have in lockdown, it is to set your goals, to set a target for yourself, to keep yourself in check the whole way through. Don't just let it slide and slip away because you wouldn't, hopefully we never get a time like this again where you have weeks, if not months on end, that you could dedicate towards something that will better your life. Whether it's studying, whether it's learning and something for a new business, whatever it is, take the opportunity of both hands as a gift. You know, and it comes at a great cost. There's people out there that are losing their lives, they're losing their livelihoods, people under immense stress. And if you're healthy and you're lucky enough to be safe, You've got an opportunity on your hands. Make the most of it. Don't waste it.